I'm here today with Emma Hammett. She is the founder and CEO of First Aid for Life. She recently won an award, a national award, for being the most inspirational trainer, and she is passionate about teaching people first aid. Emma, it's so nice to have you. Thank you so much for coming. And you. Thank you very much. Uh, what I really wanted you to share with people is um, the importance of first aid, and I think the best way to get that across is just to tell everybody why you started getting involved in first aid training. I started um, realizing how important first aid training was when I was nursing. Um, I trained a long time ago, and when I was working in the burnt unit, I um, was looking after a little boy who was so badly burnt he needed skin grafts. And his mum, unfortunately, hadn't known what to do and had run out screaming when he'd burnt himself. Had she known what to do, had she taken a basic first aid course and knew that if someone's burnt straight under cool running water, the chances are he might not even have needed to be in hospital. So he there, therefore would have been saved a lot of scarring, a lot of pain, a lot of trauma. So it's, it's equipping people with the, the first aid knowledge so that they can calmly treat things and they have the peace of mind and that they can avoid a medical admission a lot of the time. Do you know, uh, with my own four children, I've had a couple of issues. Um, both of them actually were choking issues. But I'd taken first aid a couple of times, and I had a pretty good idea what to do. So I was able to um, uh, calmly deal with the situation both times. I just put them over my hand, and I give them a good old whack on the back. Um, and a couple of times, actually, to uh, make sure <laughs> the um, food was dislodged. But um, in the end, they were both fine. I was really grateful to know what to do. I'm scared. It's very, very scary when, when your child chokes or when you're faced with a, a, a medical emergency. Um, and it could be anything. So choking is incredibly common. You said you had a, one of your children had a choking issue as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> my, my gorgeous son, he choked in a restaurant um, and uh, wasn't chewing his food properly, bless him. And uh, I was able to, again, like you, support them on the chest, hard wax on the back, um, checking each time. Out it came. And um, we were able to carry on with our meal without the table next door even realizing what had happened. And that is first aid. You've, you've, you've dealt with it. They're fine. You're fine. And life carries on. Do you know, is it just a, um, is it a coincidence that you and I both had choking issues? Is that one of the most common? And what are the common issues people come across? Choking is common. Fatalities from choking are fortunately um, incredibly rare. They happen. There's about 4,000 deaths in the States. Um, the most recent statistics I've been looking at, and there's certainly a lot of deaths in the, in the UK from choking, but it's comparatively rare considering how many people choke. Um, so on my courses, I always cover choking, mm -hmm. um, along with CPR and um, recovery position and the, the really major issues. Head injuries are probably the most common injuries. Do you know, I remember one of my children had a mm. you know, golf ball sort of sized hematoma one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but actually, I don't think that one was particularly dangerous. How do people tell if things are a dangerous head injury? Um, it's about observation. Think about Michael Schumacher um, so, and Natasha Richardson. Um, both of those were skiing accidents, but it could be anything. Um, head injuries are common because children in particular are head heavy. They don't know where they're going. They will run into things. They have no idea of risks and they will hurt themselves. Um, so head injuries are incredibly common. The key thing is to observe them after and to see if there is anything unusual. Um, I mean, the advice is to, to look out for anything unusual. If there is um, more than one strange symptom, um, then you need to get the emergency services on the way. And by the way, crying is not a symptom. <laughs> so, uh, and, and as to whether it's... A, sort of coming out in an egg is okay. Again, that's an old wives tale. Um, the thing to worry about is if there's more of a dent um, because that oh. could be a skull fracture. Oh. So you're looking for, you're looking at all the signs and seeing if there's anything un unusual. I'm sorry, could you just tell us, um, you mentioned strange behavior. Could you just give us a couple of examples of what that strange behavior might be? Well, what you're worrying about with head injuries is compression. After, after your initial bang on the head. And what that is, is the brain swelling, 
Mm -hmm. as a result all injuries swell perfectly normal or maybe there's bleeding as a result of the injury um and you know it, it might be a hard bang on the head or it could just be the jolt and that damaging the brain inside if that happens um this secondary injury can be more damaging than the initial trauma and it could be anywhere in the brain so if I was hit here, it could damage here so inside. So you're talking about behavioural changes. That could be behaviour. It could be a weakness down one side. Oh. It could be slightly blurred vision. Mm -hmm. It could be, um, as you say, a change in behaviour. They could be very sleepy. Mm -hmm. They could be hypermanic. Um, they they um, might have severe pain. Um, they might vomit sort of more than once. Um, anything unusual should alert you that there is something not right so you know, your child banged the head big bruise on the head cried but then they probably seem pretty much as they were before yeah, yeah. you're looking out and you're keeping vigilant for the next couple of days and move their cot or their bed into your room so you can keep mm -hmm. an eye on them at night as well oh that's a good idea so yeah. you're keeping an yeah. eye open yeah. just in case and tell other people that are do you know, I, just as an FYI, yeah. I've always moved children, uh, my children, into my bedroom when they've been ill or had any type of an issue because I just want to be nearby, know that they're okay. Yeah, it's that, it's that sixth sense. Yeah. Trust it. Um, and make sure that, that you're using it. A baby alarm is, is great, baby monitor, um, but moving them into the room with you definitely makes um, it makes sense. We just put little futons um, on, next to our bed, by the way, so they could sleep on them. Uh, anyway, I actually um, took a couple of first aid classes and now I am in desperate need of a top up and I'm incredibly grateful because actually you have online interactive uh, first aid courses um, and top up help. So if you are unable to take one of Emma's classes, you can always access her on the web on her website. It's onlinefirstaid.com. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, Emma is um, writing a lovely article which you can access on my site, which will give you all of the information about what to do if your child is choking. So that's a very interesting article. Thank you very much for that. And you'll also see here in another video, which is on um, teenage first aid courses. This is really important because how do you know when you send your teenager out that they're going to be okay with their friends? And the answer is to send them all to a, a first aid <laughs> course together. Get them equipped. <laughs> exactly. Get them equipped. Anyhow, such a pleasure to have you here today, Emma. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Well, thank you too.